Welcome to Perceptions Today podcast, where we discuss consciousness in all forms. March 2022, episode 18, Keith Robinson joins us to discuss his film Internal Light featuring Anthony Peake. Keith Robinson is a filmmaker under the name of KR Central. Indeed, very interesting. Um, actually, ju- just a thought. I know. I think, well, I think it was Renegade said at the beginning that um, could remember all of childhood um, almost as if it was running like a film, but with a, with some false memories. And I was just wondering if maybe the false memories were dreams. So how do we remember our dreams? Is it done in the same way? I don't remember many of my dreams. Ah, now, oddly enough, I know someone who doesn't dream. And if they do dream, when they wake up, they're extremely tired and they got problems. Where I tend to know that when I'm in a dream, there'll be an incident and my brain will go, don't worry, this isn't real. You're just observing and allows, say if it was like a nightmare, for example, but yes. you realize it's a kind of film set. And it's a really weird thing because it's something that you wouldn't actually be thinking about yourself. So it makes you wonder whether you're touching something with more information and you're seeing a historical thing that's played out or whatever is in the universe. Because as we say, there is no hard edge to ourselves. There's all space and electrons and energy and vibration that touch each other. This is an instance of the conversation coming up in the roundtable discussion. Participants knew it was being recorded. I won't be for very long, Paul. So, Oni... Yes, uh, before, uh, before you, uh, you, you you jump in with the hard pro, uh, uh, the hard thing, I I made my own research about uh, regarding the the hard problem, and uh, you know I'm I'm a very inquisitive person, uh, whereby like uh, uh, it came to terms that uh, you know when. Uh, somebody will define in terms of the health wise that uh, how come a person who's uh, uh, lifting weights trains every day but uh, he ends up having like a heart heart problem and uh, I thought it's something that has to do with mind mentality uh, something that Keith Robinson is a filmmaker uh, under the name of Chaos Central inside the brain and uh, again uh, I realized that this is something that has to do with con- contraction of, of of muscles. You know, it's like you know uh, when you have a contraction of muscles uh, uh, within your body, and then uh, then although as you keep on explaining, and uh, now I tend to understand that the. Uh, the mind is a different kind of a creature. Eh? It's a different kind of a creature. So I'll say just go on. We are listening. We are leaning. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's very good the way that you're looking at things because we've all come through different ways of looking at this. And it is a very peculiar thing. We can't, you know, nail it to the wall. It's a bit like trying to nail jelly to a wall. It just keeps sliding through until we actually find it correctly so where we're going to go next is at 26 minutes and five in the video he's talking about how the brain is a receiver and the way that the brain is supposing creating an external world of a phenomena that actually outside is presented to you for your senses and you're seeing everything through an electromagnetic radiation or vibration in your ears being basically converted into electrical impulses that go through your brain and somehow magically you create internally this external world that you're living in. And again, it's strange how this all works out because when you come down to it, he explains, just take vision for example. The image that goes into your eye is inverted and it's the size of a postage stamp. It's upside down. It's also warped. It's not straight to how you see things. The information goes down your optic nerve, gets into your brain, And then suddenly it takes all that information, turns it upside down to the correct way, produces a 3D image for you, how you actually see the outside world. And this is a magic trick beyond phenomena, which I think we'd all agree with. Okay, only that's good. And when he starts to say that it's unbelievable how you actually have a feeling of similarity with everything, because if you take it, sound is coming in at a different speed to your actual eyesight. 
And again, at the same time, the position of your body is actually, um, how should we put it, a different position. But if you really want to panic a neurologist, you have to mention to them the binding problem. Is anyone familiar with the binding problem? Before I go into a very simple explanation. Okay, I'll go into the explanation. So the binding problem is, how does all the information from sight and sound come together in the brain and literally provide you what you feel is a simultaneous experience. They believe the processing in the cells of the neurons that all this information is coming up from the microtubules. And as we said, inside those microtubules, you're getting light, which is the biophotons, which is then basically an amazing source because it's actually coming up from your DNA as well, that DNA is responsible for producing its own light. And what you'll find is if you're in a dark room, as Anthony Peake says, if you press the sides of your eyes, you'll suddenly see flashes of light. Now, people will actually say that that is pressing on the nerve endings that's causing this, but it doesn't actually explain how light is coming from the inside of your brain and being created. It's actually being, say, pulled up from the inside of your DNA, zero point field, etc. And again, has anybody actually done that and pressed aside their eyes and seen those kind of flashes? And Tamara has, Greybeard has, and the human hoax has. You wouldn't believe this. We're on the last little page before we can actually have a real good natter. So at 28 minutes 51, it goes, in that light, you actually see when you dream, because when you dream inside your head, you've actually got color and surround and 3D images. And it's a visual experience. Even blind people, when they have near-death experiences, can actually see again. And sometimes even those that have never actually seen in life before get to see images. So I would recommend entirely going to see this video that Keith Robinson has put together, which is Anthony Peake, The Internal Light by KR Central. Now, anybody got questions? Because we can natter amongst ourselves now. I think we have one from Oni Mengraybeard. Oh. Wow, that was very close on both of those. Okay, Oni. Uh, I think you have touched something there, and then I'll, I'll really, really love uh, one day if you maybe uh, you can touch on the on the topic, you know about. Uh, uh, I think you'll, you you'll be doing it on when you 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 do the the dream, uh, the dream thing, you know what uh, uh, blind people dream about because of uh, if uh, you take somebody who who never see the world looks like and uh, when he sleeps, what actually they dream about. That's one of the things that uh, uh, pops my mind because I'm a very inquisitive person. So, Oh, yeah. That, I mean, that's a great one to even contemplate, which is great. Gray beard, and then we've got M. Yeah, sorry. I, not, nothing important. I just wanted to crack a joke because we're good at jokes, right? But the... I thought something hilarious. <laughs> this whole evening's been a joke by the start of the first three different bloody rows. Right? <laughs> but I thought something hilarious that Peek said uh, with the binding. He said, if you want a frustrated neurologist, then ask them how binding works. He goes, they can't. They they can't describe that. They don't understand. It. And I, I just thought that was funny. Oh, yes. I, I mean, when you watch that and you delve into the whole sections, there's just so much information, which is worthwhile because, I mean, for example, if I tell family members about the kind of research that we do, you're kind of ignored. If you tell people, you get ignored. But if you give them something which is not done by yourself, they're either in for five minutes and then in longer, or they're out by five minutes. But at least it's all filled with backed up scientific information. And the books are fantastic by Anthony Peake. And then you can always progress asking other questions, which will lead into thought experiments and expand on that and go down other avenues. And it's just fantastic. I just love all these kind of topics, as most of you who turn up on a regular basis seem to. Em, would you like to say something? Yeah, I was just saying I was quite curious on that um, kind of trick where you're in a dark room and then you um, you press on the sides of your eyes because I, I did try it earlier and I was just, I couldn't really understand it, to be honest. So I was just curious if someone had experienced it. And, like, is it literally pressing in the corner of the outside of your eye? If you go from either side, it tends to work. I think Tamara put her hand up. Grey beard and Renegade, I think, have all experienced. Oh, sorry. 
uh, Greybeard, sorry, first, and then Renegade. So, yeah, I found um, it bettered from the outside corner of your eye if you push it. And then, I mean, test yourself. Do it in a pitch black room, and with your other hand, cover that eye. I mean, eliminate all light. And like Peek says, when you push in, you will see rings of light. You'll, you'll see it, uh, you know, it could be like a half circle, a whole circle or something. You will see light coming out the corner, like Peek has said. But I found it better from the outside corner pushing in. That's good to know. Thank you. And then Renegade? Um, I don't have the experience with pressing on my eye, but I do a, um, have a friend who is uh, not born blind, but by accident became blind. And now he can see music in colors. Wow, that's synesthesia. So when he hears, yes, yes. That's amazing. So when he hears the music, he sees uh, um, bolts of light inside his head. Um, a quick one on brain damage, which we're obviously going with accidents and eyes. A friend of mine, he had an accident where he was set upon. His head got hit on the back, on the floor, on concrete, because somebody else mistaken him for somebody else. But now, every time he tastes chocolate, he tastes roses. And the kind of the connections of misconnected which is peculiar now again if renegade if your friend would ever want to come and talk to us about these kind of subjects are oh, not as it would be a point of rep for science and talking and discussing and doing that if we could get a load of synesthesia people there's one woman who is a part of our group called wandering britches and that's wandering and then britches together is one word she's synesthetic and she actually feels numerics on her skin when she does things uh, so yeah, it would be great to have that kind of combination. The humanity hoax. Mute. I'm still on mute. So I was saying, am I still on mute? Realizing I was on mute. Um, so I always find that if I'm um, putting the pressure on my eyes, is using my temples at the same time to help with that, to help bring that about. So having the corners of eyes and then massage my temples, I, I found that that helps stimulate that awful lot more. But that was, it was more just a little little comment as opposed to anything um, com- particularly um, uh, what I'm looking for. I can't even think of the word I'm looking for. Um, no, it's gone. It was, it, was, it was an additional comment and we've, we've moved on past that point. That's okay. You can have points and bring back to the, what's going on. There are actually, as long as you're not epileptic or have any other conditions, there are apps online which will be the equivalent to Luthia Light and produce similar hallucinations using the back of the phone's flash and patterns, which is very fascinating to try, as long as you haven't got any conditions once you look at their list. That will actually give you the kind of flashing in the eyes. I don't know if you've ever woken up um, from sleep, but you suddenly see little patterns in your eyes that are flashing. That's normally like DMT, which has been in your bloodstream from dream time. And that's very peculiar as well. I think other people here will have probably experienced those patterns. Only? Yeah, I think if you sorry. squeeze your... Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. Um, you say, and then we'll go to Oni. I was just going to say, yeah, like when you when you kind of really squeeze your eyes shut very hard and you're kind of forcing it with your muscles, then I do kind of see kind of coloured circles sometimes, um, different lines and things. So that's I what totally, we're talking about. Yeah. And relate to that yeah and also just very quickly um i will be dropping off in the next few minutes but this has been a fantastic session and great to see everyone and thanks so much again for the opportunity to be a co-host today oh that's not um, a problem you've done extremely well <laughs> not as bad as i have with the three rooms that i had to create and lose everyone bring them back bring them back and bring them back again <laughs> Well, thanks very much. That's okay. You'll get a copy of this if you want to have it as well. Okie dokie. As there is um, a lot of people in here, if anybody wants to request to talk or say anything, and uh, if you want to talk, that's fine. We can come up. Keith, how are you doing? I'll get to you in a minute, Renegade. I thought Keith was uh, trying to get hold of his connection. And lo and behold. Okay, Renegade. And then we'll get Keith in when he gets his act together. Uh, spoken about these lights. Is there anybody of you who can feel the light uh, when it's turned on, even if you're blindfolded? Hang on. Um, just go over that again. Signal kind of broke out. You're saying with a blindfold on, you can also see the light, yes? Yes, with the blindfold on, um, doesn't matter what kind of blindfold it is. Uh, when somebody turns on, turns on the light, I can feel it. So I was wondering 
somebody else also could feel it. I think Gabe there was giving approval that he can actually do that as well. Again, it depends if it's got an humanity hoax. Myself, if there is actually heat being produced by the light, I will pick that up quite easily. I don't know. I'd have to try myself and blindfold myself and have a go with an LED light and see what goes on there, which would be interesting to see. I see myself. I see it when even if, uh, like, sometimes uh, I stand in a dark area and I close my eyes, I see, like, a there's something, like, that just passed. I don't know. <laughs> it's an angel or what's happening. Like, you just see, like, some light just pass. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, how can I explain that? Yes, I have the same feeling, Oni. Uh, it's pretty weird, but I understand what you mean. It's really interesting how sen- uh, senses work, because if you've had damaged senses, for example, nerve endings, sometimes they will be hypersensitive compared to other, say, you got two hands and you damage one, the other one might be more sensitive to heat by, say, a foot difference compared to the other one, and it's uh, amazing. I'm just seeing a comment that came in from Ricardo, and he's talking about, oh, you're still here, which is good. I was looking at the message that you put in there about vibrations through the sacred gates of the nose, ears, skin, mouth, and eyes, which all ties up nicely with what we're talking about. I'm on mute. I suddenly realized I'm mute. That's a good thing, isn't it? The wonderful host who has no capability of knowing what's going on. So, as I was saying, I was asking the universe, Galaxy Moses, how things are going. Now I'm seeing two icons of the same one. That's interesting. Nice to see you back, Jeffrey. And how are we doing? I think we've lost a few people, but uh, we're doing well on this. I'm still here. You're not getting rid of me. That's good. So, so far this evening, how have we found the conversation? Found it of interest or not? That's good. Ricardo has. M has, definitely. And Tamara and Renegade, which is good. And Jeffrey under his new alias, which is good. And the new people that have actually turned up for the very first time, it's nice to have you obviously take time out from your lives to do that. I know we got some new people in here at the bottom. We got Jason Myers. We got nice and also i've got one who was citizen some ah ah, there we are right citizen satoshi i'm really gonna foul up how to say things but no we've gone over a very huge subject and hopefully it's been broken down into nice bite-sized chunks and been understandable for most people that's good for humanity hoax and uh, again i think we're doing well on this subject We could go for a hell of a lot longer, but maybe we're closed down in the next five or ten minutes if there's no conversations that people want. Tamara, how are you doing with your headset? Because I know sometimes you have trouble. You're okay. That's good. Naomi, are you okay? Did you enjoy this? Can you speak or not? Put the peace symbol up. If you can't speak, that's fine. And then I know that things are going on in the icon set. And Greybeard's back, which is good. And we're doing well. Ah, right. Two people that are up there. Here we go. And Keith, and there we go, we're in. Excellent. So, right. hello. Evening, Naomi, how are you doing? Did you enjoy your first one here? I did, very interesting. Um, actually, ju- just a thought. I know, I think, well, I think it was Renegade said at the beginning that um, could remember all of childhood um, almost as if it was running like a film, but with, a, with some false memories. And I was just wondering if maybe the false memories were dreams. So how do we remember our dreams? Is it done in the same way? I don't remember many of my dreams. Ah, Now, oddly enough, I know someone who doesn't dream. And if they do dream, when they wake up, they're extremely tired and they got problems. Where I tend to know that when I'm in a dream, there'll be an incident and my brain will go, don't worry, this isn't real. You're just observing and allows, say if it was like a nightmare, for example, but you realize it's a kind of film set. And it's a really weird thing because it's something that you wouldn't actually be thinking about yourself. So it makes you wonder whether you're touching something with more information and you're seeing a historical thing that's played out or whatever is in the universe. Because as we say, there is no hard edge to ourselves. There's all space and electrons and energy and vibration that touch each other. It's a weird kind of combination and anything's on the table to try and figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. 
I'm glad that you actually made it, which is nice. I'm going to find out if Keith can hear us, because Keith's had issues with uh, setup. Yes, I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> That's good, because I can hear there's about a five to ten second delay that comes through. So for the evening and all the information, is there anything anybody would like to say to Keith about how he set up his video? Are you going to go and follow him? His other videos that are on his KR Central site which is chaos central films isn't it still keith um it is yeah i mean if you if um one thing to explain um to everyone um if you were to look at my say my um twitter page or my actual chaos central films page um on facebook then you'll see that there's quite a big gap in um, the videos I've created, really. The last one <laughs> was actually a dedication to Bruce Lee, and that was um, the beginning of um, 2016. Um, I haven't really done much since then, basically, but then that's going, that's another subject for another day. That was me going through um, my um, Dark Knight of the Soul and um, having to go through, you know, what I've had to go through to get back to this point of um, um, clear mind and ultimate health again. But um, it's funny, really, that Paul has um, got in contact um, with me with regards to this video because um, it's only just been in the last kind of four weeks that I des I've decided that around February, March next year that I'm going to start um, putting videos together once again. And... Um, I am thinking, I'm not sure whether to do it under the Chaos Central banner or to do it under a different name, but I will be um, working on other different projects again and stuff. So, and um, I do, I really do look forward to creating another uh, Anthony Peak um, video to find another interesting um, talk of his. And uh, I don't know, how am I going to do it next? I don't know. Hopefully it'll be better than... Um, internal lights we'll see but yes i'll be definitely coming back on the scene and uh making more videos so well that'd be excellent i mean i've seen the kind of work that you do whether it's festival work or even just celebration of people's lives it's fantastic and just the artwork time that goes into it it's worthwhile looking thank at you. Um, thank thank you. You. that's 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 very appreciated because um I do like, basically, I make um, videos as kind of like memories of wherever I go. So um, to give a quick history, I'm um, I'm also, as well as my job now working with um, NACRO, I am um, a multi-skilled performer. And um, that that's, um, includes the kind of stilt walking, vibing and uh, dancing. I had the um, fortune of um, being on Britain's Got, the Britain's Got Talent live semi-finals in 2012 <laughs> with um, a group called Area 51. And I've been out with them to Dubai. Uh, I've opened up for Dynamo. Um, been on stage with Nelly Furtado. So all kinds of things, really. And I just kind of, like, take a camera with me and... Um, Take it either take the camera with me and um, you know take on with me on journeys, or I just create videos of things I see really, or things that I'm interested in. So to kind of have yourself, Paul, come up and uh, suddenly bring up one of my videos, <laughs> all of a sudden is is very greatly appreciated because um, you know um, I think with a subject like this. Um, I can honestly say that I don't really have many friends or people or social circles of people that talk about things like this, especially when it comes to, you know, the science behind, say, near-death experience, out of body experiences and stuff. I don't really um, talk to anyone about it. So it's kind of like, like an isolated thing for me. So, yeah. Well, welcome to the community. You can discuss these things with us because we're... Again, we don't obsess on but one particular thing. We have multi areas. And again, one of the things that I say is it's like a Venn diagram of circles. We try and overlap them. Some overlap more than others. And we're trying to bring in other people, which say are biologists, musicians, more sculptures, and they will see connections that we don't see. And to, all together, we will support each other and just continually 
find out things. And that's the way it's been working for the oh, past six years or more. And uh, if you like that kind of thing, obviously follow the right people within the room, tell more people if they're interested, if they're not interested, find some way to put a tip bit in front of them and then uh, see if you hook them or not, but never bash anybody over the head with too much information. I've done that several times and uh, they don't like to be underneath a waterfall of information. Yeah, but it has been good. It has been um, quite an experience. You know, we'll be tuning in again. Uh, funny enough, uh, a colleague um she's not on anymore but a colleague has been listening to in um as well from nottingham and she's been listening to um in as well i actually um contacted her after i kind of like you know you, you um gave me the floor earlier and she was listening in i had to contact her and i was like i didn't i didn't blab on too much did i <laughs> No, I mean, it's quite, this is a safe space. And however people talk or however they ramble, we kind of go with that. And uh, it's easy. And we will always pull people back on topic if we need to. But uh, as we say, there is no offence taken in this room if people don't like having fun, as in banter, backwards and forwards. Oddly enough, myself M and a few others like Keith are quite happy to have that and grey beard. But if you go, oh, no not into that kind of thing, then fine. It's okay. Cause we don't take offense. Don't get annoyed with people. We're here for the research and making friends along the way is what uh, is the main thing in community. So if we all believe in things, we will actually promote them and cross reference them and retweet or put them on Instagram and see where people are. And we would like to at some point obviously have gatherings, which might be zoom or podcasts, in those ways of just small groups. I mean, Avogadis is very good. He actually has good esoteric kind of communications. Uh, thank you very groups. much for the information you you, you gave. Uh, I was making some notes as well, uh, my side. And uh, this side of town is like, it's almost midnight, basically. Like I just went in and uh, just to hear what's going on. Was uh you know as a person you you love to not to network and see what other people are uh, are saying because of as long as we live in the world uh, you will always be across people and uh, I always say go to masses where people talk you know I believe when people talk we learn a lot uh, it doesn't matter how uh, people are in the world so. You know, I've learned a lot. You know, this is, was my first time uh, of this subject. And I'll continue following you. And uh, anytime when I'm awake around this time, like I'll, I'll jump in and uh, listen to uh, your research. Um, it's uh, very fascinating, you know. It's very fascinating. And, uh, you know, I loved uh, what you have uh, put in. And, uh, you know, I'll say thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for crazy such a thing so thank, well, thank you, you for much. being part of the community and thank you for staying so long because i know it can be literally people just dive in take five minutes and then go and don't like it but uh, the fact that you've come in you've given us information and we share with you and everybody else in the community would say the same that uh, it's great of you for coming along and hopefully we will see you again when we do other events Okay, thank you very much. I, I have to <laughs> dive out the base early. Oh, that's uh, fine. We'll be closing down soon anyway, so to, it's to good. Get my, to get my rest, you know. Uh, oh. you know I don't want to have some blisters on my ears. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's the worst thing to have. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, okay. we'll go for another five minutes if you want and say things. I mean, the Humanity Hoax always has things to say. Or maybe he doesn't have everything to say, which is good. Oh, by the way, recently I said that uh, Ricardo sent something in a message and I actually got it wrong. It was actually Renegade who said about the sacred areas of vibrations through the sacred gates of the nose, ears, skin and mouth. I apologize immensely for misreading the direct messages while I'm doing these things. It's difficult to fly all the different devices at the same time. And um, just looking at other messages that come in. Uh, where are we? Yes, Ricardo was saying that when we go back to the Groundhog Day, that the character spent over 10 years in the actual event, but wasn't portrayed in the film as 10 years. 
And the original script for the film indicated that Murray's character was forced to live the same day for over 10,000 years. The film's director, Harold Ramos, reportedly said otherwise. Oh, the other way around. In the film, it's portrayed as 10 years. But yeah, she was in there for 10,000. I've read an article somewhere. Sorry, I didn't put my hand up. Um, that it's just under 34. Leave. Minutes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't turn my hand back up. No, it's okay. There we go. Hands up. <laughs> no, no. What did you say? It was what? Just under 34 years. It's about 10 days under 34 years to have mastered all the things that he did in the um, wow. uh, that he did in the show. I've, I've read that somewhere. I can't remember where, but there was 333 years and 300. And... Oh God, if I get this right, this would be tragic. 350. Hang on, you said 34 days. years a minute. 33 years and 355 days. Ah, oh, that's where those that were days. Yeah. The other bit. Right. I think that's where it comes. I think I, I've read that somewhere. Someone, I'm hoping someone can validate validate that somewhere, but I'm sure I've read that somewhere. To do to do all the things he did, allowing oh, for sleep and eating and, and and other things. Definitely. While you're here, everybody, I would follow the humanity hoax. He's got a very good knowledge on ancient history and megaliths along with civilizations. When he did his talk on Saturday, very fascinating and kept people entertained. So if you want to ask information to him, here's one of the men to go to. Hi, praise indeed. Thank you very much. It's a, no problem. It's a, it's a hobby for mine that started with um, – I went to university to do philosophy and my um, – my, my, what became it started as a BA and became a BSc was I wanted to do I wanted to prove a site something that was different from the conventional it's all um God created everything or all science so I I, I decided to create a theory that was so absurd that was at least as credible as the other two scientifically rather than all the beliefs I, I could could it be as credible and then went so kind of so deep into it that I ended up convincing myself and then I've spent the last 20 years following the, the absurd rabbit hole I went down for it and Atlantis has become a little bit of a, um, a fascination for me but it's, it's obviously not to talk, talks tonight but I'm I'm just, you know I'm not going to bed anytime soon so I'm quite happy to chat about it but I don't want to monopolize the chat because that wasn't the topic of tonight but I'm quite happy to have a nice especially you can't do it in three minutes by the time I close this down either um <laughs> If you ever go through Terry Pratchett and Terry Pratchett says that ideas are floating out there and they can strike you in the head and then embed and <laughs> give you your passion, those are the kind of things where rabbit holes are great. You never know whether it is a true passion or a delusion or other things, but sometimes it's good to follow those peculiarities. Absolutely. It, for, my, for mine, it was a um, – well, I went to university to study accountancy. I walked out my first ex- ex- um, lecture and thought, this is not the rest of my life, not what I'm going to do. And decided to do philosophy, which I'd done at A-level. And it was almost like I was dragged into the uh, degree because something, someone needed me to be there. And it was, it had never been a thing. I'd, I'd, I'd bought Graham Hancock's first book. I, I bought Fingerprints of the Gods, but I wasn't huge into it. I was just professionally curious. And then it just became the lifelong session of the last 20 years now. It's been a thing. It's, it's been a real fascination. And um, the, the Saturday, is just, for those of you who came on Saturday, I think probably looking at the course, I think there's only one, maybe two of you. Um, it's a start. There was at least time. two people I know that were in your room when I checked the participant list. And because they don't have the same Twitter names as your ah. participant list, that's where you're going to end up with difficulty tracking people down. And there was, there's at least, I could see at least, there was a couple on tonight that I saw. Um, but um, this is uh, the Edgeways of publishing a book next year. And the first chapter of that book is my version. Uh, we're going to do the Atlantis story, so I need to write that up and get five, 6,000 words in it. And Saturday's talk was the first draft of that, and there was really good questions came out on Saturday, things I need to now elaborate on to make sure that by the time we get to publication, I can answer certain questions. So um, it's, it's something I'm going to work on over, until I'm going to have a couple of other presentations. Hope it'll be nice to do one of these on a uh, Tuesday night as well. But I'm going to thrash that theory out to the point where I can put it publicly. And I'd like to, you know, I'm a huge Graham Hancock fan and I'd like to take the baton on from him that, you know, he's, 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 he's an older guy now. He's, he's really 80 getting on for that sort of age. And I'd like to think that I could follow in his footstep having learned from him and then hopefully to take the mantle on and, and, and be, and be the new, if I could get even halfway to be in the new Graham Hancock would be a huge aspiration. But 
huge a huge inspiration for my fascination so far that the very first book i bought with my very first paycheck was a graham hancock book and ever since then it's it's become a mild to moderate obsession of my life <laughs> that's great publicize where your talk that you did on saturday will be loaded onto so that people can go and see it when it turns up i need sarah jane for that because i don't know how she does it and no, sarah, but there's a location sarah, sarah, isn't there? There is, and I just don't know what it is. But there is. It's not YouTube or anything. <laughs> I, I don't know how she does it. She's she's she does all the technical stuff for me. I'm 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 training to be a co-host of Edgeways, but at the moment I'm not quite at the point where I can do well, the technical stuff. Well, bombard the human host and ask him where it is, and then he'll come back to you. Dear yeah. Him, and then you'll find out this talk, which was over an hour, and then with questions afterwards, which probably ranged to about two hours, I would assume. From yeah, it was about it was about that. We were, we were talking a lot about Daring Kiyu, which is a that that became the the main topic of talk. Old Turkey is, Underground, super. Yeah, which was, I think was a good debate because I was asked some very challenging questions, and the, the, the questions that I can't answer, but at the same time, I think my answers were enough to say, look, well, the, the 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 standard scientific answers don't make sense, and while the challenges were were fair. They also weren't conclusive, and they fitted in my theory because I, I sort of borrowed during QT. Look, it doesn't when you've got a seven-story, massive, multi-level complex underground that wasn't dug by people who were trying to ha- hide from hunter-gatherers. You, you no, don't build especially temples. with the fact where you've got all the the drainage and the temples. Yeah, it, it, it was so advanced. I mean, we couldn't do that now. We, we could if we even tried. We, you'd, you'd, I mean, the. the Planning permission on its own would not get that through anything. We've and just had guaranteed... information in, sorry to pause you on this, when we're going back to your bit about Groundhog Day. Ricardo has just put, it's from the independent.co.uk, which talked about how the writer reveals how long Bill Murray actually was reliving the same day. And Ooh. the link Ricardo has, and he's passed it to me. So if you want it at some point, I can pass it across to you. But what was the number? But was mine right or completely wrong? Well, Ricardo puts that the film portrays 10 years, but Danny Rubin's original script for the film indicated that Murray's character was forced to live the same day for 10,000 years. The film's director, Harold Ramos, reportedly said otherwise. So you got three different kinds of play. You got the film, you got the writer, and you got Ramos. What was Harold Ramos' number, though? Was that where I got my... It doesn't say years? on this particular copy out of the text that Ricardo's posted into me. I'm not going to open up the article at the moment because I'd have to read it all and then try and figure it out. If I may, if I may. Good evening. Good evening, Ricardo. We get on uh, to Avogadis, don't worry. Uh, I haven't missed you. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 uh, carry on because you're answering really the humanity hoax's question, which will be short, and then I'll get to uh, Avogadis. The thing here is the, the original script was very dark. It has nothing to do with what the movie came out to be. It, it wasn't even a comedy, see? It was a really dark movie about a man forced to, to, to relive uh, his mistakes, his, his bad conduct, his, his, his attitude to life and to others. And... Uh, by the time it was made into a movie, it, they, they realized they, they, they couldn't sell it. It, it, was, it was impossible to sell something oh, wow. so, so dark, so depressing. So, so, so they turned the movie around and they, they transformed the, the, the supposed 10,000 years in something that the director, the director said it has to be at least 40 years, at least 40 years. To someone to get so good at the things that he do, if you remember, he, he knew exactly by the second everything that was going on. He can't do that in a, in a, in a, in a few days or a few a few years even. So, uh, and the article that I posted is the article about the the, the, the actual interview with the, with the director and with the writer, and they confronting their. Um, their, their sides because the, the writer's still not happy with, with what they did to, to the movie. So I just wanted to say that. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I know no, Ricardo. I was not in queue, so I'm sorry. No, 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 you're answering the question. That's fine because Avogadis will be talking next. I'm sure he's quite happy with that. And then after Avogadis, it'll just be saying goodnight, etc. But Avogadis, continue. Um, yeah, I just uh, thought it was interesting that uh, the humanity hoax well, mentioned Atlantis because. Uh, the other day on Sunday evening, we had a really good spaces chat about Atlantis. And uh, yeah, I was hoping that uh, maybe sometime we would join in 
uh, I can find the right time to accommodate both our time zones and maybe we could have a spaces chat also specifically on Atlantis because myself and my co-host Ron, like we both uh, have a fascination with that subject too. It's really interesting stuff. Well, um, it, I, I don't know if, how this works, Paul, because you've got all the technology and I'm still the Luddite here. If you were stepping off, if there was a few people want to stay on for a little while, I'm, I'm, I'm awake for a good hour. If there was a few people want to stay on and chat about, I don't want to take over the call, but if there's people who are dropping off, I'm... I'm happy to stay on and have a chat for a bit because I'm I'm awake I'm awake for a while, but I don't want to monopolize because he's in my call. It's, it's not it's not my space. If you want to do this the way to do it, the humanity hoax, we will ask people to follow you, and we we'll give them five minutes to kind of get onto your bio and follow, and then once we close this down, you just send out a link, and then they will just come in and follow your link again. Oh, that sounds technical. Is that easy to do? How many followers have you got? Sorry, I've got to figure that out. 390, I think. As you, might not, you might not be able to do it because normally it's 600. Um, Avogadis will be able to do it. Avogadis will be able to pull up another room because he's got the capability to produce a room. Avogadis, talk to me. Uh, yeah, possibly I can, uh, although I'm still working, so I don't know if I can do that right now. But uh, like I said, you- on... On on Friday evenings and Sunday evenings, I do the esoteric chat. So I'll try and arrange something earlier for uh, like English folks next time. Okay. Or otherwise, somebody else within the room, they could volunteer creating a room. And then if they're in the right time zone and they've got the hour or so that you want to talk, you could just join them. Here we go. We've got a request to speak, which happens to be Estevel Solis. Good evening, Estevel. Uh, I could host a space now if, you know, just uh, so you, that uh, you, I just followed you back. Yeah. Uh, I can you know, uh, yeah. Picking apart the lies about the ancient pa- past. Um, yeah. I just followed you back. I, I Yeah. I can host a space and then you, I'll make you co-host and you can just uh, do your thing. That'd be wonderful. It'd be good to get to meet with some of you because I'm, I'm quite new. I think this is my second session at Paul. I think I ghosted Oh, one yeah, you came in at five two. minutes the last time, yeah, just at the I'm end of one, much. so that was good. Estevel is very good. He's come in. He's talked to me before. Good chatting, and he knows how to host well. And if you all want to follow Estevel, then you can see when his actual room turns up or follow the Humanity Hoax, and when he's in the room, you can follow him into the room. That'd be wonderful. Like that That'd be nice to have a little bit of a chat and... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's good to get to know the group. It's I'm, I'm, I feel a very esteemed guest to join this this community. It's wonderful. And I as long as we overlap well. and we all keep it straight and fine, I think that's the best way to be, isn't it, Estabel? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, I, I'm you know, I just, I just, uh, yeah, I just came in. I'm not familiar with Anthony Peak, and I just listened to the last. I don't know, 20 minutes and I had to, to make a phone call. So I went out for a little while. So I'm not too familiar with all the stuff you talked about, except I heard something about closing your eyes and seeing colors. And I thought that was like normal. Don't you all have that when you close your eyes that you always see colors do, behind yeah. your, your eyelids. So I, I don't know what that is specifically was about, but you know, you've probably already been on for two or three hours now. So yeah, the summary is that, uh, Sorry, as Did you record is, everything? Yes, we are. So, so you're going to make a podcast out of it? I will be able to give you a direct link to it, and then we'll do um, something in that manner, so you'll be able to have an option to listen to it. Oh, the thing with would be nice. the body is it produces light inside itself from DNA, so you get biophotons. So they will actually produce light with inside your body and that's where they go down into the microtubules and that's where they think zero point energy comes from and then you get your consciousness come up that direction and that's what we've been discussing also humanity hoax will actually be able to pass you the link of tonight's talk plus the actual video link that we were discussing can't you Mm -hmm. yeah i I think already i already retweeted something because you posted that link earlier didn't you somewhere oh yeah you can watch that link it's a half hour long at your leisure you don't have to watch it tonight but uh, that will sort of fill you in and the guy who actually created that film is keith robinson down here in the actual chat he put it together okay I'll, i'll go and follow you as well thanks hi keith Nassel robinson so i'm following you now too okay 
And Ricardo's Great. got a lot of dogs behind him. I can hear him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, my, my, the microphone is on. Oh, that's fine. That's not a problem. There's not too many people talking. I, I was just writing to you. To, I was writing to say I, I'm at 1% battery, so I... I, I I will stay on until the... the, the oh, don't worry. Comes. I'm going to be closing down <laughs> now. I've had a thoroughly good time. It's really nice that everyone comes back time and time again. And obviously, Nath, we haven't had the opportunity to talk. But uh, if you wanted to say hello before we shut things down, that's fine. But otherwise, come along to another one. We always have good conversations. And also, Dave, we haven't had the chance to say anything to yourself. I'll give you the quick option if you want to or not. But... Uh, if you found it nice and pleasant, or you can just leave us a message at other points in time. It's always nice to have feedback, whether it's good or bad. Oh. It's been great, Paul. This is a really well hosted sessions. For, for those hey, who are staying on, how do we do this? Who, who's, who's, do we get a link out or is someone going to drop me a message? Best of all, we'll do that, yeah. Okay, okay I'll, I'll just uh, host the space and then I'll just use your name, the Humanity Hoax, and I'll plant an English flag so that <laughs> the swarm of Dutch people will just enter my uh, space then hopefully they'll understand that this will be an Anglophone space then because otherwise everyone might be starting to talk Dutch and that's not so I'll just cut them off and tell them that this will be a, a space in English not in Dutch or French or whatever other, other language uh, uh, okay so I'll just do that you go. And then yeah. It's been great for you to do this for Humanity X, and this just shows how the community works so well, that yeah. we interlock and we promote everything else, and that's the way that I feel we should be stepping forward in most of the things we do in life. It's fabulous, Paul. I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow how it goes. And uh, it's nice that you've introduced Edway. Sarah's really pleased that the that we've integrated us. I think there's a lot of crossover between our two part, sort of two um Channels. I think there will be there, there'll be there was some obscure things that we talk about, but other things I think will really interlock. And she's really when I, now I've inter, introduced her, she's really happy that this has become a thing. And the, the number of followers already that Edgeways have picked up because of people in the group already. She's just saying it's it's been a great thing. So it's a great Excellent. positive, great crossover. As you see, um, the humanity hoax. If you look at my banner, it's quite true, isn't it? It absolutely is. <laughs> You're either in for five minutes or you're in for a lot longer. And that's what the problem is. Yeah, so it's good fun. Okay, I'll wait for the links to, to jump in. And I'll, um, yeah, looking forward to having a bit of an open chat for this evening. I can't wait. Okay. Do you Once again, that's the bell. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I'll, I'll go and host the space now. So I'll be leaving this one. Okay, bye. Okay, see you around. Bye-bye. See you, everyone. See you bye. soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So if anybody wants to say goodnight, I'm up for that, and then I'm closing down in the next three minutes. Mm-hmm. Tamara, what did you say? I missed that. My eyeball was looking off side screen. Oh. Keith, you okay? Yep, yep, yep. It's been, um, it's been good. Um, thank you, Paul, for, um, yeah, for having me on, and that has been an experience. Thank you for, um, yes, bringing the lights back into uh, Chaos Central Films. <laughs> you've done that single-handedly for myself so you know hand on my heart thank you very much and um it's good, nope. it's good to hear everyone speak on here as well it's so interesting how you know you have so many thoughtful like-minded people on here that like to um get together and talk about like-minded things so i look forward to doing it again like enough it's been very organic which is good yeah. and renegade so paul thanks for the talk and uh yeah it's good to hear you uh on this monday evening Good to bring bla- uh, bring bring back a glitch. Hopefully on Tuesday. Which time machine have you got, Renegade? Tuesday. It's Monday. Oh no, <laughs> it's Groundhog Day today. <laughs> anyway, thanks for. Uh... I hope it's Tuesday. <laughs> I hope it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's Thank Tuesday. You. I was just fucking with your mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for the talk. Oh no problem. Good evening. We'll do another one soon. Catch up soon. Anybody else? Closing this down. Right. Okie dokie. Well, it's been a pleasure as always, and hopefully you've got things out of this and you found people to follow and also will give good reviews in different places or bring me good information and we can swap information about consciousness, etc. Or even if it's just new things, uh, always interesting, the scientific cosmology and astrology, along with uh, quantum physics down into the biomechanics and also plant intelligence and anything along those lines. Even if it's a new form of coffee, it's always good fun. I will see you around on the next one, and I will now close this down. Speak to you all soon.
Bye. To help our research and understanding, leave Perceptions Today's podcast reviews, subscribe to the podcast, along with the other social media accounts and share. Come and join our live events. That way we can get together and have thoughtful discussions along with advancing our understanding of concepts as we go along.